more like Serpent Knight Badgen. <laughs> You're too much. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm YouTube mega celebrity MBT. You're probably wondering why I'm here before you tonight. Well, I have one simple request for the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Listen, if this Marincess Frog deck takes off, you have to call it Princess and the Frog. I don't care how good it is, I don't care its representation at regionals, Princess and the Frog is the name of the deck. It is right there, the pun is perfect, it's gold, Jerry! I know Yu-Gi-Oh! players are allergic to good names, you have to do it just this once! Princess and the Frog, just this once! Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. It's been a while since we took a look at Marincess. Last time, if you'll remember, they had a single worthwhile monster. And now that Owie's gotten a sliver of a shred of screen time, it's time for a second look. With Chaos Impact on the horizon, let's see if the new set will have an impact on the archetype, or if they're just going to be as chaotic as they were last time. Presenting Marincess Frogs. So here's the list, and whew, okay, we're playing more than three main deck monsters this time. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Marincess is Aoi Zaizen's archetype, and while her in-anime win rate still hovers around a respectable 50%, including such impressive victories as the one against unnamed duelist number one, her new deck is at the very least more frightening than her brother's. Most notably, her Link Monster's recursion effects means a single copy of Marincess Seahorse can often climb up the Link Ladder all the way to a Link 3, then be added back to your hand before the end of the turn. It sets off Mobilize Engage alarm bells in my head, for sure, but that's all the deck does. Its setup is unmatched, and its resource management is amazing, but as Flower Cardians can attest to, drawing 35,000 cards in one turn isn't particularly good if you lack a way to win the game. That's where the new support comes in. Chaos Impact comes packaged with six new support cards worth playing, which, like a bubble in a Sonic the Hedgehog game, breathes new life into this ailing undersea archetype. Marincess Blue Tang, proof that Konami has dementia and forgot they already printed Foxy, Foolish Burials when normal or special summoned, and excavates three off the top of your deck, adding a Marincess when it's used as Link material. Why does Cyburst get such nice things? Mandarin is a free special if you've got two Marincesses, which is critical for continuing the combo, and the extra deck cards and field spell facilitate a Build-A-Boss Link 4 that is more than capable of winning the game on its own. We're also playing Frogs because the Marincess Link 2 is Water Monster Generic, allowing us to pop off Sans Seahorse. Plus, you know what's better than a masterpiece? A masterpiece with totally awesome backup. Theoretically, we should be able to consistently craft Wonderheart turn 1 and Boral Sword turn 3. And even if we brick, there are much worse outcomes than Toad Pass or Marbled Rock with 4 hand traps backup. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Marine Maidens. 3 Blue Tang, a better Salaman Great Foxy. 3 Seahorse, which is routinely special summoned upwards of 4 times a turn, Nibiru's Take Note, and 3 Mandarin, our Extender. After that are the Frogs, 3 Swap, 3 Dupe, and 2 Ronin Toten, followed by the format tax of Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler. Next are our spells, 3 Cyanet Mining, can we get an F in the chat for all the budget players in the comments? 3 Cosmic Cyclone, because without this card the deck has no way of beating Mystic Mine. And it came up. Repeatedly. Three called by the grave, one battle ocean, and a foolish burial. You haven't lived until you foolished just a special summon blue tang from the graveyard with anemones effect, and go plus three. Finally, we're on traps, three of the virgin infinite negation hand trap, and three of the Chad Marincess wave. In the extra deck, space is tight, but the ratios could definitely be improved. We're on Two Toad, Boral Sword, Nightmare's Unicorn and Phoenix, Mastar Boy for OTKs, Wonderheart, Marbled Rock, Two Coral Anemone, One Crystal Heart, One Sea Angel, and Three Blue Slug. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Crystal Beast, one of the most maligned archetypes in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Hey, TCG players, are you enjoying the new Pendulum support? Well, we have an important announcement to make. It's time for Master Rule 4. 
We're looking to add to the oppression, and with a hand like this, it seems incredibly likely. We're going to start by normal summoning a copy of Seahorse, which we'll use to link summon a copy of Blue Slug. We'll activate Blue Slug's effect to bring back Seahorse, and Seahorse's effect is special to a link point. We'll then activate the effect of Sea Angel before special summoning a copy of Mandarin from hand, and activating Coral Anemone's effect to bring back Seahorse one last time. We'll go into Crystal Heart and Wonder Heart, triggering the effect of both Battle Ocean and the Anemone in Graveyard to bring back Seahorse again, before equipping three Marincesses and setting one card. Our opponent's going to lead with a Rainbow Bridge, followed by a Crystal Bond. After that, they're going to normal summon a copy of Sapphire Pegasus, and... Well, I don't know what I expected. We should be able to OTK from here, and that top deck makes it increasingly likely. We're going to link summon a copy of Blue Slug. We'll add this copy of Mandarin back to hand. Let's see what we find off of the Blue Tang. Oh, that's fine. It would have just been icing at this point anyway. We'll use this Mandarin as fodder for Cyanet Mining before special summoning a copy of Seahorse, going into Coral Anemone to bring back this copy of Blue Tang, using Mandarin's effect, and then link summoning a copy of the Starboy to facilitate an OTK. While our opponent can have the battle damage they take from one attack, they can't stop all of this. Our second match is up against Rockets, and oh god. Am I gonna have to read a Rocket card? I have precisely zero interest in learning the exact mechanism by which this deck aims to guard dragon me out of the match. Our hand doesn't contain any Marincesses, but it does contain a couple of Toads. This game should showcase just how fearsome these frogs can get. We're going to lead with a copy of Foolish Burial, sending a seahorse to Graveyard, before we special summon a copy of Swap Frog, bidding a copy of Dupe Frog. After that, we're going to special summon a copy of Ronin Toten, and link summon the generic Coral Anemone, bringing back our copy of Seahorse, and we're off to the races. We'll use Blue Slug's effect to get her back, we'll special summon a copy of Ronin Toten, normal summon a seahorse to go into Marbled Rock, trigger the effect of Coral Anemone, and bring her back as well. We'll use Sea Angel's effect to get a copy of Battle Ocean, we'll activate Marble Rock's effect to get a copy of Seahorse, and oh my god, not only do we get the Wonder Heart, we get to special summon a copy of Totally Awesome as well. Incredible. We'll pass it back to our opponent. They'll respond to our standby phase toad activation with an infinite impermanence, and, well, if it's going to be useless, I at least want the infip. We're going to get a dupe frog from our deck. Our opponent will normal summon a copy of auto rocket dragon and then link summon a copy of striker dragon. That's prime veiler bait for me. I'm pretty sure if they don't get boot sector launch, I just win. We are allowed to draw, so it looks to be the case. We'll activate Ronin Tone's effect before making Totally Awesome, just as an insurance policy. Before we go into Blue Slug, bring back this copy of Seahorse, Normal Summoner, to go into Coral Anemone, use Coral Anemone's effect, and then go to Battle Phase. We'll attack for a significant amount of damage, bring back this copy of Marbled Rock, and get in for Far Over Lethal. Alright, so it's time for game 3, and you know what that means, a best of 3 versus meta. Our opponent's on Salaman Great, which is... Thematic, I suppose. Water versus fire, flame versus aqua, cybers versus cybers. But our opponent's deck has recently won a world championship, and we have not. Thankfully, our grip is pretty good. We have a copy of Blue Tang and a couple of pieces of interruption. Maybe we can make it happen. We're going to lead by normal summoning a copy of Blue Tang and sending a copy of Seahorse to Graveyard. We'll then link summon a copy of Blue Slug. We'll trigger the effect of Blue Tang, and what do we find off the top? But, oh my god, a Mandarin. Perfect! We'll then special summon this copy of Seahorse, and then link summon a copy of Sea Angel, getting a Battle Ocean to hand before special summoning a copy of Mandarin. We'll then link summon a copy of Coral Anemone, bringing back this copy of Seahorse. We'll special summon a copy of Crystal Heart, set Battle Ocean, and trigger its effect and the effect of Coral Anemone by link summoning a copy of Wonder Heart. There's three Marincesses, two Infinite Impermanences, and an Ash in hand. What could go wrong? Our opponent will lead by blocking the flame buffalo. Why are they allowed to do that? We can ash the sign at mining at the very least, but unfortunately this means they're going to have the Foxy and Graveyard to destroy our Battle Ocean and remove our protection. We have Infinite Impermanence for this copy of Mirage Stallio, but unfortunately they can go into Sunlight Wolf, which activates the effect of Mirage Stallio, and while we can use Coral Anemone to bring back this copy of Battle Ocean, our board is wiped. Our opponent's going to set two cards and pass it back to us. Let's hope for the best. We're going to start by normal summoning a copy of Blue Tang. We'll then special summon a copy of Blue Slug. That's going to fetch a copy of Effect Failure from our opponent. We will call it by the Grave It. They will infinite impermanence our Blue Tang. We'll infinite impermanence their column! But they have the trump card in Roar. Not often you see a six deep chain in casuals. Off the top, we do find a copy of Blue Tang, however, and it can add itself, which is excellent news. We're going to use the second effect of Seahorse to special summon a Ronin Toten for our hand before we start working up the chain again. Unfortunately, I don't think we can get all the way there. At the very least, a Marbled Rock will deal damage, though it can't eat through a Bailinx. Our opponent draws for a turn, and things aren't looking particularly good. They're going to activate Foxy again, which removes the protection, and now they're free to do whatever they want. They'll go into another Mirage Stallio to get Gazelle. They'll use Gazelle's effect to send a copy of Jack Jaguar. They're going to Heat Leo, so we aren't going to be able to float off of this copy of Coral Anemone. They'll get back the Jack Jaguar, Reincarnation Summon the Heat Leo, reset the Salaman Great Roar, and wow, there are just no outs in this scenario. They do get to do a fair amount of damage to our life points, and we can't even OTK them because they're going to activate the second effect of Sanctuary to gain a ton of life back. 
off the top. What do we find? Uh, I don't know. It would have to be something miraculous. Well, a seahorse isn't it. We're going to activate the effect of Blue Tang, Eat a Roar, and Concede. All right, so it's time for game two, and oh god, that super polymerization is frightening. Are they on Deplexer Chimera? Oh, thank god they're not, but Violet Chimera is still nothing to shake a stick at. What's worse, our hand is terrible. We have a Marincess, but no way to make it past Marbled Rock. It's going to have to be enough. We're going to lead by normal summoning this copy of Seahorse. We'll then link summon a copy of Blue Slug. That'll turn our one Seahorse into two. We'll then link summon a copy of Sea Angel, and our opponent will respond with a Fant for three. Oof. We're going to add Battle Ocean to hand before link summoning a copy of Coral Anemone, bringing back the Seahorse one last time and ending on Marbled Rock. We're going to trigger both the effect of Coral Anemone and Battle Ocean to equip a ton of Marincesses, set a card, and pass it back. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Circle, well, Ash, it's as good a card to Ash as any. Afterwards, they're going to normal summon a copy of Flame Buffalo and go to Bay Lynx, attempting to chain block us, but joke's on them, I have the antidote. They have a Fowl in hand, so they'll have material for the follow-up Sunlight Wolf. They'll link summon that, and then activate Salamander Great Sanctuary for a reincarnation summon. Almer Incest Wave, I don't know why they don't negate this until I understand they have just enough cards in hand to activate Super Polymerization. But fool, you can't Super Poly with my monster that's unaffected by your cards! Unfortunately, we do have to burn a copy of Effect Veiler on this Violet Chimera because our monster's attack is different than its normal one. We're going to normal summon this copy of Seahorse. We'll go to Blue Slug. We'll use the Blue Slug to bring back Seahorse and then summon it again before going to Coral Anemone. We'll bring back Seahorse one last time, go into Crystal Heart, and thank God we have accessed our linear game plan. We probably can't kill our opponent here, but we can remove this copy of Heat Leo from the board, which is just about as good. Now Salamander Great, of course, has a ton of one-card setups, but a Flame Buffalo is not one of them. They're going to set it and pass it back to us. We draw another Seahorse, we'll special it, go to Battle Phase, attack over it, get in for 44, and pass it back. For turn our opponent draws, a Foxy. They'll normal summon it, but we have the negation. And... Oh, thank God. All right, so it's time for game three, and oh my God, we've done it. We've opened Broken. Unfortunately, we're going second, but if we can just get to the main phase, thankfully our opponents opened one of the very few hands in Salamander Great that loses to Disruption, Debug opens. They're going to start by normal summoning a copy of Lady Debug, and boy oh boy do we have exactly the Ash Blossom for you. Afterwards, we're going to link summon a copy of Bailinx, activate its effect to get a copy of Sanctuary, then reincarnation summon a Bailinx before passing it back. For turn, we draw another water monster. We're going to go Hellbent immediately. We'll activate Swap Frog's effect, bounce it back, activate Signet Mining, special summon it again. Our opponent will effect failure, but ho ho, our last card is called by the grave. Afterwards, we're going to banish this copy of Dupe Frog we just sent, so we can special summon a Ronin Totem for Coral Anemone. We're going to special summon this copy of Blue Tang, whose effect activates on special summon before we activate the effect of both Blue Tang and Sea Angel. We find a Blue Tang off of Blue Tang. Of course it can add itself before we special summon a copy of Mandarin. And you know what? We haven't link summoned Blue Slug yet, so let's do that as well. We'll activate Battle Ocean and go into Wonder Heart. We're then going to activate the effect of Coral Anemone, and I think we can do it from this position. We'll normal summon a copy of Blue Tang, special summon a copy of Seahorse, and link summon a copy of Mastar Boy for the fatty OTK. That's 42, 26, and far above lethal. So we're back with the deck, and oh my gosh, you guys, we finally won something. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's consistent. One of the issues with the pre-chim cut of this deck was that if you failed to open Seahorse, you were twiddling your thumbs until you found her. Now, not only were we able to play hands sans Seahorse, we can make a board without any Marincess at all. Two, the individual pieces are completely broken. I cannot imagine a single more pushed card than Blue Tang that does not have Salaman Great in its name. There's really nowhere for this archetype to go but up. And three, the power play actually wins the game. Making Marbled Rock was cool, but often left us in a scenario where we couldn't convert the advantage into a winning game state. Wonderheart is a big chonker, and attacking with her and her associated underling is way more than enough. And the cons. One, it's definitely still an archetype in its infancy. The low amount of support and few playables, while not a stake through the heart of the archetype, does make the deck completely linear. Two, it's not adaptable. The cause is the same as the previous point, but the result is that without the ability to modify its game plan, the disruption you put up will be extremely potent against some decks and extremely weak against others. And three, it's expensive. And all the marines are money, and it doesn't look like that's going to change in the upcoming set. Link 4s tend to come with a huge price tag attached.
All in all, it's already a drastic improvement over previous versions of the deck, and honestly makes it a strong candidate for rogue playability come October. So that's that. While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special thanks to my patrons, especially Michael Saumur, Distrin, Lucas Geerdes, Adam Trevino, Second, Lieutenant Labcoat, Meatmoto27, Adrian Bra, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, and Donnie Fillerup. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash mbtygo every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.